A few days after federal authorities raided the home of the chief fundraiser for New York Mayor Eric Adams, causing him to uh, rush back from meetings in Washington, D.C., well, guess what? They, are, they now have uh, seized his phones. Uh, this is the New York Times story right here. FBI seizes Eric Adams' phones as campaign investigation intensifies. Uh, what the, the story laid out that uh, FBI agents uh, approached, they says right here, the agents approached the mayor after an event at New York University on Monday evening and asked his security detail to step away. A person with knowledge of the matter said they climbed into his SUV with him and pursuant to a court authorized warrant took his devices. The devices, at least two cell phones and an iPad were returned to the mayor within a matter of days, according to that person and another person familiar with the situation. Law enforcement investigators with a search warrant can make copies of the data on devices after they seize them. Now, again, this follows after the FBI raided the home uh, of the chief, um, the chief um, uh, fundraiser uh, for the mayor. Uh, this has been uh, in some of speculated uh, that uh, it dealt with, uh, again, the, the, uh, the work of 25 year old former intern Brianna Suggs. Now, her home was the one that was raided. She was the star fundraiser uh, for the mayor. Uh, he said that he uh, returned uh, from a trip to D.C. Literally, he landed in D.C. Feds had raided. He get, got back on a plane and flew back to New York. Uh, he said that he needed to be with his people as they went through a, a traumatic experience. Uh, Matt, I'll start with you. Um, when the FBI starts grabbing your cell phone and your iPads, you might want to worry a little bit. Two words, all bad. Um, if the FBI is, is poking around in your devices, that should really concern you. And a, a couple of things that I think people need to know. The first is it mentioned a warrant from the judge. What's concerning about that is a, a judge has to find that there's probable cause to search those devices. So this isn't just law enforcement saying, hey, we think you have information that may be pertinent to this. This is a judge saying, I believe that you've presented to me enough evidence that there may be a uh, probable cause, or rather there is probable cause to search those devices. Um, so that would be concerning. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs of, of federal um, campaign laws, but uh, recently I was asked to be counsel for a campaign. I'd never done it before. I called a friend of mine who works in that space, and she told me that the joke is FEC jail is real jail, meaning that the feds take very seriously any issues as it relates to campaign finance. So this would be concerning. Um, I will say, however, with him being the candidate, I don't know how intimately involved he would be and whether his devices really have that information on them. But I'll tell you, in my practice, uh, digital devices are bar none, uh, far and away today, what gets people in the most trouble, particularly because those cell phone dumps can find deleted images, deleted text messages, things you think you can hide cannot be hidden in, in phones the way you think that they can be. So this could be concerning if there's, in fact, um, information or evidence that they've done something against the law as it relates to their campaign finance. Uh, Joy, what do you make of this? You know, I want to wait and see. Um, just because he is the candidate, uh, we don't know all the details. Um, I think it makes sense to have his devices. Um, hopefully, they exonerate him and make it seem or at least um, remove one uh, source of evidence that he might have engaged in some wrongdoing. Um, FEC jail is real. I also think it's a reminder that, you know, for Trump and Republicans who believe that the FBI is biased against them, it's not true. The FBI is biased against uh, wrongdoers, right? People who break the law or who are suspected as breaking the law. With any luck, we will have an investigation here and it will not result in further charges. What I do hope is whatever the FBI decides that it does so quickly so that the people of New York can move forward. It is very hard to govern uh, when you have something like this hanging over you. And sometimes I worry with these types of investigations and prosecutions that sometimes they are done and, and they linger on. And the only people who really benefit, I mean, are hurt by it are the citizens right? Because it distracts their leaders. So I hope that whatever they decide to do, they will do it thoroughly, decisively, but quickly. Michael. 
Um, yeah, Roland, you know, I was reading an article from the New York Times as well, and it seems like this investigation is um, it's a criminal inquiry into whether his 2021 campaign conspired with the Turkish government and others to funnel money into its coffers. So that just sounds, I don't know Mayor Adams personally, but everything I know about him through the media, uh, that just, um, that doesn't sound like him. We'll see how this plays out, this investigation. Um, but, you know, this is, a, this is a big development. This is not something that's good, but we'll see what they actually turn up as evidence. Um, Matt, uh, again, Adams, former New York, New York police uh, officer, uh, he has talked about how he is uh, very uh, much about uh, doing everything the right way. He says sometimes he's driven his stuff crazy uh, by that. Uh, but again, when you start talking about uh, getting money from foreign sources impacting elections, that is not something that they play about. Uh, and it is indeed a criminal investigation. Yeah, and I, I think Joy's right to remind us that we need to, you know, hold off until there's concrete evidence of wrongdoing, right? This is purely investigative at this point, as far as we know. So, you know, we can't pass judgment on whether he did something wrong or didn't do something wrong. But I will say that, I mean, it's nonetheless concerning. And I'll say the problem a lot of times with law enforcement is that they don't necessarily have clarity on charges, but it's very easy for them to bring charges. So the concern a lot of times is just the appearance of impropriety, because you're not even defending uh, real substantive charges yet. You're just a part of an investigation. And that alone is concerning, because if they find anything that they want to try to make hay of, there's not anything that really stops them from that, particularly when they've gotten an entree to those devices through a judge's warrant. So, you know, if there's information that exonerates him, I, I hope that's the case. But uh, it is concerning that he would be a part of this investigation because the feds don't play. And if they go get a warrant and a judge gives it to them, that's because they believe they have something that may be found in those phones. Matt, if you're on, if you're working that campaign, um, what would you be advising all those folks to be doing right now? Well, first, I'd be making sure I had representation if I had reason to believe I might be part of that probe. But what I would be advising them to do is not making any statements about anything. I mean, I know one of the statements he made is that he's law enforcement and he'll cooperate. And while I like that in theory, uh, the unfortunate reality is if they're coming for you, you need to make sure you're protected. So I would be advising people not to delete evidence, not to delete any information, but also not to make any statements and absolutely not to talk to law enforcement without uh, counsel there, because the problem is, you know, if you're not being Mirandized, if you're not in custody, they don't have to give you warnings. They can start asking you questions. And if you're caught off guard, you could imperil your own liberty and other people's liberty if you don't have uh, competent counsel. So I would say shut up.